So Schwazier just moving out onto the track and he's going to um, spread eagle everybody else. It's the first time I ever rode him and going down to the start or before the race, the trainer said to me he's got two speeds, slow and very fast. I remember Schwazier very well when he walked into the paddock and the one thing I thought you could have a pretty good dinner over his hind quarters, you could have you know, two or three plates there, I mean, just the width of his hip and his strength. I mean, he was 25 to one or something, I think, in the King stand, but he won very, very easily. But he was a, a magnificent horse with enormous power and speed. As an apprentice, I was over in Australia, so few people knew me. And I remember my agent ringing Eddie Byrne rang me. He says, Johnny, there's a, there's a, the Australian are on looking for you to ride a horse called Schwazier in the King Stands. Oh, I said, that's good, you know, it was great. Um, as I said, I didn't know what to expect. He was twice the size of every other horse. He had four white feet, a uh, big, strong neck in him. And again, as I said, getting them to the start was a hard job. But as soon as those gates opened, he was out and he was gone. Dominica, Schwazier, Johnny Murder, three in front. The Aussie's going to do it. Schwazier coming home to win the King Stand. What a famous victory. Schwazier wins it. Acclamation second. And I always remember that, uh, it's what Colin Hayes told me, that uh, your Australian sprinters are much better than your sprinters. Not our middle distance horses, but the sprinters are, and Schwazier absolutely bore that out. We kind of learned something, something completely new, a whole new sort of way of training, and the Australians then, as I say, came over and, and, and the rest is history. It was a real eye-opener, but the, the trainer said to me after the King stands, we're going to run him on Saturday in the Golden Jubilee and he'd be even better. It was unprecedented. I mean, I, I don't know whether any horses really used to go for the double. I was a bit surprised actually, because nobody ever done that before. Like we're going to run him on a Tuesday, a group one over five, and then we're going to back him up, you know, four days later. You don't know how they're going to come out with a race. But Saturday rolled up. And as he said, he was even better on the Saturday. I think that was a better performance on the Saturday. They've got inside the two furlongs now and Schwarzier has crossed over to take it up for Australia. Schwarzier has gone two or three in front now. I was drawing the middle of the track and, and I planned to kind of go straight for a while. But I always planned to get the rail because I said, when this guy gets the rail, he'll really take off. So I, I went straight and then I let him drift over onto the rail. But as soon as I let him drift over, I gave him a squeeze, he drifted over onto the rail. And when he hit the rail again, he just took off. Schwarzier shortening stride with 100 yards left to go. Airwave coming at him. Schwarzier on the rail. It's Airwave the far side, but the Aussie's going to do it again. Eos, step aside, far lap. Schwarzier, he's won it. It was probably a better race. I had to ride him a bit harder. But again, the toughness, the pure raw speed he had, the, the way he travelled through the race. It was a great day. It, it was absolutely remarkable. He opened up the floodgates with a performance that no one saw coming. I genuinely don't know what would have happened if Schwazier hadn't have won both races or one race. And I think winning both, it sort of set the whole Australian market off thinking, well, hang on a second, you know, we can, we can really dominate in this area. And their strike rate over the years after Shazir was, was absolutely remarkable. I mean, and horses like Miss Andretti and Scenic Blast, culminating, of course, in the, in the great Black Caviar era.